Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Chichester series, 67 parishes around the city of Chichester in West Sussex. There's some belters down here, folks, so let's go and check them out. Welcome back to Chichester, everybody. Now, if you think you've seen that bridge before, you have. It was in last week's Boxgrove episode. This is where I broke off the Boxgrove route to go into today's parish. This is the parish boundary, and that parish is called Tangmere. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Round two in the district of Chichester takes us to the lovely village of Tangmere. There was once a major RAF base here, and in this episode we'll be taking a look at what remains of it and some of the stories it has to tell. RAF Tangmere played a pivotal role in World War II, especially during the Battle of Britain. It was founded in 1917 for use by the Royal Flying Corps as a training aerodrome, and in 1939 it was enlarged to defend the south coast against attack by the Luftwaffe. Tangmere's only hotel and some houses were demolished in the process. The RAF commandeered the majority of houses in the centre of the village, with only six to eight families being allowed to stay. Throughout the war, the station was also a secret base for the Special Operations Executive, who flew agents in and out of occupied France. After the war, the RAF high-speed flight was based at Tangmere, and twice the airspeed record was broken here. The latter of those came in 1953, when squadron leader Neville Duke flew a Hawker Hunter at 727 miles an hour. The 50th anniversary of this event was commemorated in 2003. Fun fact too, RAF Tangmere was the setting for King Charles III's first ever flying lesson. Part of the old airfield is now the Tangmere Military Aviation Museum, as well as a massive industrial estate, with some pretty interesting businesses. Let's get walking and learn some more about it. We begin our trip around Tangmere at a service station on the westbound side of the A27. Chichester is three and a half miles away along this road. A left turn and we're on Tangmere Road. This is the main road through the village from north to south and it'll make several appearances on this route. For the most part, the first section is just an amble through some residential areas and Tangmere isn't short of a few of them. It does after all have a population in excess of 3,000. Good job then, there's a school. This here is Tangmere Primary Academy, which is part of the Chemnall Academies Trust, one of the largest multi-academy trusts in the south of England. With the onset of war, the village has mostly been a military settlement because of RAF Tangmere's proximity, but since 1966 it's slowly developed as a rural community rather than a military one. A boom in modern housing has led to an influx of young families, most of whom work in and around Chichester. So, so far pretty res residential and not really much to write home about. Of course, all these houses were built for a reason and that's because there used to be an airfield here, Tangmere Airfield. We will be uh, heading towards that in a few moments time. It's pretty easy to spot RAF housing for me these days with the amount of RAF camps I've been to. And I reckon this building here is something to do with the RAF. 
It's certainly got that kind of feel about it. I wonder what it is. I was spot on. This building was indeed RAF related. It's called Spitfire Court, and these days it's a block of flats. However, this used to be a former Airmen's Institute and a chapel. It dates back to the 1920s. After RAF Tangmere closed, it became the Tangmere Community Centre, but all the locals knew it as the Spitfire Club. Back to Tangmere Road, and here's a bus stop. You can catch the number 55 or the 500 here, both of which go to Chichester, the latter to the railway station. Next, this big white building is Willow Dean Nursery School. Since 1991, this has held a summer show where the main hall is transformed into a theatre. Sounds fun. Now we've turned left onto Nettleton Avenue and we find ourselves crossing the village sports field. The building in the distance here is the Tangmere Village Centre. It's effectively a village hall but also incorporates a dentist. It has two halls, the main one has a stage and the smaller one has access to changing rooms and to the playing field. Definitely a bit more meat for you in that section, a few more landmarks. And if, if it's landmarks you're after, we're now heading towards the bigger ones here in Tangmere. The next one is the church, but it's still quite a walk away. So there's still some more residential areas to cover first. This co-op store used to be a pub. It was called the Barder Arms, named after Douglas Barder, the ace fighter pilot who the regular viewers out there may remember from my Curtin and Lindsay video. He commanded the Tangmere Wing of Fighter Command. Tangmere Road again now, and here on the left we pass the airfield's main gates, which are marked with a small, easily missed brass plaque. Then we have the village's only other shop, which is Minster Bridal, who have a sister shop in Wimborne in Dorset, established in 2015. Then it's a right turn and we head now up Chestnut Walk. This is perhaps the only area of Tangmere that doesn't have any real connection to the airbase, or at least that's the way it seems. You can bet though, there's some really nice properties up here. Probably homes that fetch a good half a million pounds at least. And it is West Sussex of course, so they do include some thatched cottages, like this one for example. Lovely. At the end of the road, there's a path which leads to the church. Well, it seems the sun is coming out just at the right time. It's uh, reflecting off this field, this golden, gorgeous golden yellow field. And doesn't it look great? This is England at its finest, is it not? And also this sun will make the church look good. The church is just over here at the end of the footpath. And that's our next thing to talk about. Dedicated to St Andrew, Tangmere's church stands proud in the far southwestern corner of the village. It's a little difficult to date this one. 1100 seems to be the best date the experts can come up with. Many of those killed at the former airbase during the war are buried in this churchyard here. These graves are tended to by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. This big memorial stone summarises them all quite nicely. As well as members of the Allied forces, some of the graves here belong to members of the German Air Force. And speaking of graves, these were interesting. I can't recall ever seeing ones quite like these before with a brick-built sarcophagus. The church building also incorporates brick, some of them Roman, as well as reused stone. In 1341, King Edward II granted the Archbishop of Canterbury the right to hold a fair at Tangmere on St Andrew's Day. The event is still held by this church every autumn, and it's also why it's dedicated to St Andrew. The more you know, eh? And behind the church you've got something called Saxon Meadow, which is a private estate. I can't go down there, so I've got to go that way instead. And now we're heading towards RAF Tangmere's airfield itself. Now this has got a museum, it's got a few other bits and bobs of interest, and I can actually walk around the edge of it. I've had a look at the map and there is a public footpath which skirts the edge of the airfield. So this is going to be interesting. Let's go and find it. At the end of Church Lane is another stone which memorialises the airfield and all who served in the RAF here at Tangmere. This one was erected in 1976. 
If we turn right, we're heading for the Tangmere Military Aviation Museum. This is a major visitor attraction and a base for annual RAF celebrations. It was founded by a group of enthusiastic veterans and it opened in June 1982. Its many aerospace exhibits range from World War I through to the Cold War. These include fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters and aircraft engines, which are mainly housed in two hangars with a small number on display externally. Several exhibits are on loan from the Royal Air Force Museum, including a Hawker Hunter, which was used by Neville Duke to break the airspeed record in 1953. You can access the old airfield via a public bridleway, which runs alongside the museum. Our job now is to walk across it towards our final area. So of course this would have been one of the perimeter tracks around the edge of the airfield. The main airfield itself, where the runways are, or were should I say, is all this here. It's uh, now back to agricultural use again. So it's good to see the airfield being turned into something productive. Sometimes we see old airfields, don't we, where they haven't done anything with them and they are sort of just stood there doing nothing effectively. But here, it's back to agricultural use. So now we're going to walk around the edge of this airfield. I think one of the runways is coming up on the right-hand side here, actually. Not totally sure of the, the layout of it. But if I follow this, it'll take me towards an industrial estate, which is also part of the former airbase too. We're going to cut through that industrial estate and back into civilization. And once we've done that, there's not really much left. Just basically a walk back up to the A27 and towards Boxgrove. What I could see wasn't an old runway, it was a piece of hard standing where the hangars were once sighted. This was the scene of an accident during World War II. This memorial marks the exact spot where a plane from RAF Melbourne in East Yorkshire crashed into a hangar here in 1943 after suffering damage during a German raid. The hangars are long gone, but the base's control tower is still standing. It was built in 1944, and although it's now derelict, there are some plans to restore it for use as a community facility. As we approach the end of the perimeter road, we start to enter the industrial estate. There are many businesses on here, but the first thing I noticed was an array of greenhouses. They belong to Tangmere Airfield Nurseries, and they grow bell peppers and aubergines. In fact, they're the UK's largest dedicated pepper nursery, supplying sweet bell peppers to the country's largest retailers and fresh produce markets. So I'm not going to lie, this part of the route was a little bit sketchy because I wasn't totally sure where I could go. Um, and I kind of <laughs> thought to myself, am I kind of trespassing here? Well, I've just had a, a little chat with a security guard for the um, greenhouses over there. And he was um, you know, quite happy for me to, to, to film, that's not a problem. And he also gave me some information about the, uh, about the airfield, which I haven't yet told you. If you walk around the airfield, which apparently is perfectly legal, <laughs> not, not really sure about that, but there we are. Um, you can see around some concrete blocks in the floor. And the idea of, the, of those concrete blocks is they were staunching pads. Now you RAF people out there will probably know exactly what those are. I'm not as clued up. But his sort of description of them was that if the Germans came in to land, they could use these to blow up the runway. I don't quite understand it, but I'm sure, like I say, you guys out there will know what that means. Bit of information for you. Anyway, we're heading through the uh, industrial estate now. So here we've got the South Coast, Southeast Coast Ambulance Service, which is just a sh short walk from the uh, area where we've just been. So we'll walk past that through these industrial units and this will take us back into the village. Here's another big business on the estate. This is JCC, who design, source and manufacture light fittings. They began as a small family-run firm and developed into the multi-million pound organisation that they are today. For more than 20 years, in fact, they've been leading the way in the UK lighting market. 
After the road bends to the left, you approach Chichester Fields Business Park, a collection of modern offices which are all named after cathedral cities like Lincoln, Exeter and York. I'd imagine a few of you locals will be familiar with this. York House is where you'll find Chichester's practical driving test centre. Lastly, our route heads back to Boxgrove via Duke's Meadow. This is one of Tangmere's newest residential developments, consisting of 59 homes. There's a nice mix of two, three, four and five bedroom houses, and the whole estate is centred on a public open space and the Duke's Meadow play area. OK, and we're back at a roundabout on the A27, again on the border between Boxgrove and Tangmere. Now at this point, I'm going to carry on walking so I can finish doing the Boxgrove episode, which you've already seen in last week's episode, of course. Uh, but as far as this episode goes, you just have to imagine that I've just got into the car and driven across to East Hampnet, which is the last bit of this episode. It's a little hamlet which also falls within Tangmere's boundaries. I'll see you there in a moment. Lastly, we have the hamlet of East Hampnet, which is only accessible from the westbound side of the A27. So after driving up that road to a roundabout in order to turn round, here we are making our way through the place. It's similar in many ways to the likes of Strettington and Crocker Hill, which we familiarised ourselves with last week, made up as it is of one main street lined with detached clusters of housing. Marsh Lane at its eastern end is the exception to that rule. East Hampnet seems to have had a connection historically to Boxgrove Priory, and below I've linked a website which explains that in more detail. Aside from that, that's East Hampnet, and the parish of Tangmere is officially complete. Next week we'll be exploring another small village out here in West Sussex, and another which features several small hamlets around one main settlement. I'll see you there next week, but it's bye for now. Two down, and 65 left in Chichester. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>